Okay, so this video is about exact match domains and how they pertain to or relate to using PPC advertising or Google Ads search advertising or even other PPC advertising, Google Display Network advertising, Facebook Ads advertising, but primarily Google advertising itself, how it affects your results and how it should work into your strategy. And so um, the very first thing that um, you're probably thinking about this video is you know exact match domains. Last time I've heard about that was 10 years ago when it had to do with SEO and you know really ranking websites and that the fact that you know it, it kind of is an outdated strategy there it doesn't really work somewhat works not like it used to all that certainly true however exact match domains have always actually had a secondary purpose that a lot of people never really thought about much the data was out there I've you know already researched this myself tested this my, myself 10 years ago when you know 10 exact match domains had a lot more value than they do today because of the uh, lack of automatic ranking or ease of ranking have it before or having to do other work on a domain to get it to rank organically that uh, provides benefit to your Google Ads and also to your SEO both. And I'm gonna go over both of how that actually works in here on today's video. And if you're actually trying to look into build a Google Ads campaign yourself, basically how and why you should do that, how the domain you choose should work into your strategy itself. So anyway, I came up with a quick list here of uh, three things that you should uh, actually overall just the plan that I come up myself with if I, and basically coming up and trying to develop a campaign from scratch and a business from scratch to go along with the campaign. And so, you know, essentially with that, I will say a lot of times what people will do, if they have a product company, one of the most, a common, I shouldn't say very common, but a common strategy that my clients have and I have also started suggesting to a lot of people recently since it does work so good is if they sell have an e-commerce site will have secondary subdomains for each of the main category or main stream or, or main types of categories of products that they have or applications or uses for the product that, that they have so if you had for instance a paint product and the paint product could be used for a car and a boat having the type of paint it is for you know, auto paint, the type of paint, car paint, and basically having two de do domains dedicated for each thing, even though the website itself pretty much is a mirror copy with some slight revisions to it, can actually help you a lot in both departments, PPC and SEO wise. It doesn't actually take that much work to copy a website. If you just, There's a lot of good tools out there that can copy a website like that in just a few minutes. You can swap out the color scheme, you can change a little bit, you know, basically take the same logo with new text on it, let's say, and you're in business, you have a new domain, and you can capitalize on all these benefits that I'm going to go through here. So that would be an actual practical application of how you could do this if you didn't plan on changing your domain. You already have a, you know, branding and history behind your primary domain. Of course, if you're going to start out a new business, you can use this to pick a domain as well. But uh, anyway, as far as though, you know, the reasons that you are going to have that uh, and, and do that kind of thing, as I mentioned, if you're going to create sub sites for your brand in order to get some sort of a PPC results benefit out of it, main reason why that works is because you're able to, when you have a domain that matches closer to what the user is searching for, much like a custom headline in an ad or custom headline on a landing page, which is both things I'm really, really big into as well, it gets really good results, is you're bringing up the authority and or perceived trust of that domain. So you know, much like um, you know, if you were searching for performance auto parts and you were looking for um, custom rims, um, what are you going to choose by default? You know, a site that specializes in selling custom rims or somebody who sells tires and rims and other detailed products. Even if it's a local business, you might actually click on the national provider because they specialize and that's why you would actually switch it, select a national provider. So it's really easy to break out and create secondary sites 
to capitalize on that. And, and the reason why it matters is you, you say to yourself, well, nobody reads the domain when they decide to click on an ad. Uh, yes, they do. Actually, there's a lot of studies that actually go over and show that you can find. I'll try to link that in the description, possibly, but ultimately, uh, you know, a good 10% or so are going to look at the domain name or just what they call the display URL on your ad, and they're going to decide from that whether or not they're actually going to click on the ad at all itself. So they read the headline first, of course, still, and then they look at the domain to see if they should trust you and the custom, the how close what you're searching, they're searching for at the time matches the, in the domain, and the more Simplify the domain is, you know, of course, having customrims.com over exoticcustomrims.com is actually going to get even more click through and from having even more perceived trust, of course, because people kind of know a shorter domain uh, is more expensive or more rare, if you will, and therefore the only the the, the it's more likely that the the big big name company has that domain and therefore will get you even more trust and more click through rate. More click through rate on the ads will translate into a higher percentage of the market share you can get from you know Google overall and a lower cost per customer and higher profit per customer per acquisition as well all the way down the line. So you have that of course the other kind of element with that when the people read the domain is you know the readability of it. You know essentially you read you, the shorter the domain is, and you know if you have um, Tony's Auto Detailers.com, that domain, as with you buy any domain, you should look at it. And if it's hard to read there, you should really think about having a secondary domain just for PPC. I've also done that as well. Um, it could just be you know uh, bestcustomrims.com. You know. It, and then you're kind of killing two birds with one stone in that situation. Then you are looking like you're specializing, which will get you some bonus points and some extra additional results and free pro extra profit essentially available from your ads. If you're, you're it's working well already, you can switch over to that. Of course, there's some volatility and some short-term drawbacks to switching domains due to the algorithm and how the ads could learn how, how the system learns how to run your ads and then having to switch over to that. But it is worth it. They'll uh, do the double-digit increases in performance you'll get, which I'll get into in just here in a second. But the fact is, it should be readable, and you know, and given especially with like somebody who clicks on a PPC ad, PPC ad versus an SEO listing or free organic listing, they want something. They're gonna they're gonna be antsy, and they're gonna want to know right away what they're looking at. Just like when they get to the landing page, you have if they can't right away in just two three seconds find out what the purpose of your page is and get a good feeling about it, they'll just bounce back because it's too easy to select another ad. And in this case, it's too easy to just go on and, and look at the next ad, ultimately. They don't want to, but if you make it a little bit too hard, there's a, you know, a tipping point where they'll just switch over and look at the next ad. So anyway, if you do get something that has both of those kind of elements in there, you really nail it, you know, hit it home or invest in a premium domain, from what I found, you can usually increase the click-through rate as much as 50%, 30, 50, 30 to 50% generally, but up to 50%. And within that, um, you can also increase your conversion rates if you buy a premium domain with that, depending on how you do it. Mostly on the increase of conversion rate comes from having a premium domain, adds more trust in and itself. You can increase the conversion rate of your landing page and your site overall as much as 50% as well. That click-through rate increase will probably result in another, uh, if you're at five to one ROI, that might bring you up to seven to one ROI, bring up your ROI on, on your campaigns, 25% or so, or six and a half to one, pretty much about, two, you know, you aren't getting a, a directly a 50% increase in your, your return on an account spend by increasing your click-through rate 50%, but you will get about half of that about 25% or, or, or overall, or, or, or in other words. So anyway, that's kind of the number you're gonna be able to get by doing that stuff and investing in a premium domain. You can decide of how much you wanna spend on that domain. You may test what I'm saying here on a cheaper domain, but incorporate some of the stuff that I'm talking about here. Certainly up to you, but I've tested this, you know, half a dozen times now. No, it certainly does work. And 
it's just a tried and true method you're going to be able to use to get good results. Even if you do spend a few thousand dollars on a domain, a premium domain, that will pay for itself, you know, of course, um, potentially a couple months, uh, depending on the volume. If you're, you know, doing one plus million dollars a year, one to five million is in year, a year in sales already, I would say that would pay for itself a couple months time already for you. So just to put things in perspective, and even if you're so a small company, it'll give you a great, a lot greater, um, you know, if you're, you know, right on the cusp of making your campaign profitable or not profitable, that can be just be what it tips it over the edge and certainly worth your efforts there just for that reason as well in that situation. But anyway, um, how all this, my second thing on my list here I wanted to bring up was how all this plays into the SEO. So I kind of touched on earlier how EMDs was primarily used for SEO before. All the stuff that, you know, because of the rank brain algorithm, PPC ads and, you know, whether or not you are eligible and um, desired by Google to have your ad show up, the same kind of system applies to the organic space. Ultimately, bottom line, they're trying to serve their customers so people come back and use Google again. They want people to click on the ads, but they also want, if people choose to click on the free organic listings, to have a good experience as well. So they'll come back and, and for the person that just normally likes to click on organic, will come back instead of using a different search engine. That's the number one priority. That, you know, making money is a priority, but they know number one priority is to get people addicted to the search engine so that ultimately people always will use that. And that's actually number one, it works into the revenue equation for them as well. But how this works into the SEO, again, going back to the, the uh, subject at hand, all these same benefits that I mentioned up here, click-through rate increase, amount of people you're gonna click on, get to click on your listing itself, the amount of purchases, all that will also translate into what you get from the organic as well. Of course, you'll also get a boost somewhat, just like it back in the old days, of ranking easier. It's not quite, I'd say, you know, having an EMD, that might be 20% of the power it used to have, just all in itself as a ranking factor. But you can't deny these two things. If you, and you know, with that said, part of the rank brain algorithm has to do with your click-through rate too. So just like changing your headline on your ad to get a uh, better result there, well, in the organic space, if you're ranked number five and you have a better headline, you can jump, you can get a higher click-through rate than number one. You can ultimately go to one just based upon that one factor and how the feedback loop works. But also with that, since the domain, as I said, has a you know 10% or so of the time people will read the domain, and I would say in the organic space, it's probably 30, 40% of the time they read that, they're more impressed than they were, and then now you're, you got another 50% click-through rate because you got a domain that really sounds fancy and or oppressive, you can now jump in the ranking. So maybe you had a 5% click-through rate, but not, you didn't just get a 50% increase in click-through rate, you got a 500% a, a, uh, increase in click-through rate because you went from five to one specifically because you got from your push, your ranking push from five to one. Therefore, the click-through rate on the first listing is 12% there versus the number five listing, you were at you know, 2% click-through rate. Just in, an, in itself uh, or by nature, how much click-through each position gets. If you don't know what that, how that works, you can go ahead and that data is published in quite a few other places on how much that can, uh, your click-through rate at various positions, one through 10 there, and how that affects your results. And that gives you a heads up on being able to rank better and then of course you'll be able to convert more of the traffic if people are more trusting before they get into your site then you just gotta follow through on the promise if you will. You still, it won't technically work if your site doesn't, it lets the person down in terms of what they were expecting when you get to your page so it does raise the standards a little bit but obviously you can easily follow through with a good designer, somebody who knows what they're doing on the UX, make you a site that is as good or better usually better than just what the leading competition that's already there on Google has. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. So anyway, the last thing on the list here is um, the, the siloing strategy. So basically, as I mentioned before, there's a couple different use cases where you can use the strategy I gave you with the EMDs. You can do it to start out a new business or just switch over to a new domain. That's something I've done more, um, I would say, than, than having a break off and to have multiple websites so that you can do better as a whole 
by breaking things into subcategories or for different applications of your product uh, itself so that you can have a domain for each one of them for the main ones that you're you know top five or whatever that your brand has whatever there along those lines uh, you can what I would just simply suggest is to say if you are going to do that so again if you're not if you don't want to switch domains you have a good domain already or you just can't switch a lot of people obviously can't you should definitely try that at the very least or if not if you can switch your primary domain do that I would say do that first of course and that's going to be has more potential overall for you uh, overall and quickly right away um, based upon how quickly you can execute it and so on and so forth pretty easy to switch a domain over on a site an active site and just 3, 301 redirect your old domain to your new domain to bring over all the rankings with it and of course switching all your ads it will shake things up a little bit short term but if you do have a secondary site and that's that focuses on a, a secondary high volume category there just start with one test it out do a split test between your current ads or how they were running for the last however long they were running compared to directing that category that one category's traffic to the new domain and see for yourself the difference if you don't get those numbers you can come back here to uh, in the comment section and complain but i know you know by and large you do that even halfway well you're going to get some benefit and if you do it pretty well you'll get these numbers pretty much for sure 30 to 50 percent bump in ctr or whatever and uh you know double digit increase in the conversion rate just from depending on how much of a you increase the the uh, quality of the domain if you will but just start with one see what the factor is and then scale out the strategy all the rest of my ppc strategy pretty much works the same way you know uh, lots of stuff takes a lot of time to do but if it was easy everybody would do it what the great, great thing about ppc is is you know you can test out things on one particular keyword or one particular niche or category know that it works and then hire a team to execute on it knowing what the cost and, and then and or benefit is from that then and then factor it all out see and then you know if you know you can generate an extra you know 20 grand in profit a year just by switching the domain and sub branching out your and having several sites instead of one and it takes you only a few hours to set that up realistically with the web developer why not so anyway that's the way that a a renegade marketer is going to think about things somebody who can scale their business bootstrap it and or just a guerrilla marketing tactic if you will and the type of stuff that i use personally to build accounts up from you know basically nothing to generating many million uh, millions of dollars a year in revenue and it all starts one step at a time so anyway i hope you liked the video please uh like share and uh Go ahead and subscribe. I have lots of other videos just like this one on my channel, basically going over advanced PPC strategy and things that I've learned over the last 15 years doing PPC for uh, businesses I've owned and clients that I currently work with as well. So thank you for your time.